Our very first chapter is chapter one, of course, which um, gives you just an introduction to operations management. And so I'd like to take a few minutes here just to go over that chapter with you. Um, if you think about any activity around you that has some level of complexity, we're not be thinking about even running uh, the MBA program or running a, a, a lecture, or whether or not we're talking about, say, uh, registering students or serving students in the cafeteria, all of those activities are part of operations. And of course, in each of these activities, we have a sort of a principal set of objectives. It could be one principal objective or multiple objectives. And we have to manage a whole number of activities or a host of activities to ensure that we achieve those principal objectives. Here in or enter in operations management. Because what creates the service or the product that consumers are interested in in acquiring are a number of operations and if those operations are not managed effectively then you will not necessarily achieve the desired outcomes or outputs okay from that uh, operation so all of us even though we may not have had in our work experience a title of operations manager but all of us have been involved in operations of some kind all right in this chapter, we will just sort of get into the definition of what operations management is. Understand that there is a distinction between products and services largely because there are implications for how we actually manage the processes and the operations that go into creating the products and the services. And um, one of the sort of age old objectives or goals in managing operations had to do with trying to make sure that whatever operation system you're managing is as productive as possible. And so understanding that there's production where you actually produce the good or the service, but productivity is how you utilize the resources that go into the production of that good or service. All right? So what is operations management? Can we come up with a definition? We know production is just the creation of goods and services. So if I want to make a, a cake, for example, there's a production process behind that. If I want to detail a car, there's a set of activities that are behind that. There's a sort of a production system, in essence, that creates that service. But operations management is all of the actions that take place in ensuring that that good or service is actually created. So we typically would take outputs, and if we work backwards, the outputs come from a transformation, but the transformation require inputs. So therefore we go inputs, we transform them, we create outputs and outcomes. And that is really what operations management deals with, is the management of all of the facets of that system. All right? In all organizations, just to kind of put operations into perspective, in all organizations, you will find three core functions, marketing, production operations, and finance and accounting. If you think about HR, HR actually belongs to the operations function. Um, so name it, um, receiving, warehousing, all those sorts of things actually belong to the operations function. In fact, you'll find most of the activities in any organization belongs to the operations function. So operations play a really, really critical role um, in all organizations, both services and manufacturers. So just here's an example, just to show you, if we look at a commercial bank, we have operations that include the teller scheduling, the click, uh, check clearing, uh, collection, transaction processing, the layout of the facility, the vault operations, maintenance, security, scheduling the security workers and all that. All of those activities are part of operations. All right? In uh, different types of industries, you'll see, again, uh, in the airline industry, ground uh, support, equipment, maintenance, ground operations, facility maintenance, catering, fighter operations, crew scheduling, 
name it, gating of flights, all of those things are part of operations. So I'm going to skip that because there are quite a few of them. So why should we bother study operations management? Why couldn't we have just made it an elective? Well, because operations happen to be one of the three core functions, we cannot afford to graduate people who are, do not understand what operations contribute or how operations create value for the firm. Finance, marketing, but operations is actually what creates the good and or the service. Imagine an organization without any services or any goods. What does it exist to do? It does not exist. So fundamentally, you have to create that good and service, but yes, it needs to be funded. You need to actually manage the money associated with it. And then you need to market it and let people know that you do have the product and or the service available for sale. All right. So it's very important that we study OM because it is a critical part of just about any organization. Also, too, it is a very costly part. Um, in a lot of cases, when we look at the cost of goods sold, the cost of goods sold, a fair chunk of that amount happens to be operations-related costs. Think about, um, let me just give you an example. If you are running a fishing plant and you want to sell fresh fish, then when you think about all of the activities, the cost of that fish, most of the activities that went into this was basically a, a, a fishing trawler went out, caught the fish, it was stored on the, on the trawler, brought into port, offloaded, put in, um, into some containers, and sold. Well, there's no additional value-adding operations. So all of the costs associated with that landing that fish was largely operations costs. There may be a small amount of marketing, letting people know that you're open for business, but as you could see, 90% or maybe even more of the cost of selling that fresh fish would have come from operations-based activities. All right? um, this example just sort of shows you that operations can uh, make a really great contribution to profitability when we look at this example right here. All right? I won't bother going into details. What do operations managers do? If you happen to hold that title, but it just sort of gives us just a brief sense of the different functions that are involved. Planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Well, wow, these are very nebulous concepts, but you know, planning, um, planning would include things like, for example, if um, we were planning a workshop. Well, you got to uh, decide the location of the workshop, the length of the workshop, uh, the facility that you're going to use, who you, the facility to you use, so all of that will be the planning function. Um, organizing, basically making it happen, uh, that is uh, getting the participants uh, registered, um, negotiating with uh, your service provider in terms of catering and all those sorts of things like that. Staffing, if you have people who would actually work during the workshop and provide some support, you have to staff that as well as a, your lead facilitator. The leading in a case like that, well, um, this may not provide a lot of different opportunities, but in a general organization where you have to lead workers to get uh, stuff done, um, leading becomes quite important. And of course, controlling. Controlling in the sense that you want to ensure that the resources are, are used as best as possible, and you want to ensure that you control the processes so that they do achieve the results or the outcomes or the goals that you set for that operation. All right. Now, what's interesting is that when we look at the operations function in an organization, is that that operations function can be viewed through a set of smaller lenses. And in our texts, they like to refer to this idea of 10 critical decision areas, or we could think of it as 10 dimensions of operations so that when we want to think about the various aspects of an organization as operational elements, we could think of one of these or one or more of these 10 areas or dimensions. They call them decision areas. Why? Because as part of operations management, we make decisions in these categories. 
right? So the design of goods and services, that's one area. And each of those I actually explain a bit more uh, in this particular chapter. Managing quality. So what do we mean by quality? Just how much quality is needed? Uh, what uh, level of conformance to specs? Um, if uh, What are the expectations of your customers and to what extent you will try to meet those expectations? Processes. Processes create products and services and they have capacity. So you need to design the process that could actually give you the kind of throughput um, and capacity that you require. So for example, in the context of say a school, capacity will have to do with things like the size of the classrooms, the number of faculty. Uh, if we have a, a, if we're teaching online, we could teach uh, con uh, conceivably thousands of students at the same time. Well, that's a process. But if you decide to teach face to face, it's very difficult to teach a thousand students. And so processes have different capabilities. Location, where do we locate? How do we lay out a facility? Um, the human resources element, and as I mentioned a bit earlier, while it sounds like it's its own area, it's actually part of operations. Supply chain management, so how do we ensure that we procure the resources that are necessary to create the goods and services? We need to manage inventory sometimes. Even in services, we require uh, inventory, a stock. And because we invest, in the acquisition of that stock, it's very important that we maintain the right levels. If we run out of stock, we cannot deliver the service, but if we have too much stock, we're tying up capital in inventory. And so it's important that we um, find a way to minimize the amount of inventory that we have just lying around. Scheduling, scheduling of work, scheduling of workers. Um, so if you think about airlines, scheduling of the crews, scheduling of the flights, uh, transit um, systems, scheduling of the trains, scheduling of the um, buses. Obviously, there, there is an objective, the operations objective, uh, which has to do with um, getting people to where they need to go to on time at the cheapest possible cost. And, um, and then, of course, you have safety requirements and so forth. And last but not least, an area called maintenance. There are decisions around how often you maintain, what kind of maintenance strategy do you use, um, how often do you change your equipment? Uh, do you wait till it breaks down and then try to replace it? Or can you do some preventive maintenance and so forth? So these are 10 very important areas in uh, operations management, right? And we see them expanded here a bit more in terms of goods and services. What good, what service should we offer? How should we design them? Uh, to meet the needs of customers, etc. How do we define quality? Who's responsible? How is it going to be managed? Uh, process, what capacity do we have? What kind of um, flexibility do we want? What technology do we use in our process? Where do we locate? On what criteria do we base our location selection and so on? Um, layout, how should we lay out a facility? And if you look at uh, restaurants or you look at um, supermarkets, they lay out in particular fashions that is supposed to help to improve flow. Uh, human resources design, what kind of workers do we need? Do we need low-skilled because we have automation or do we need high-skilled workers because we're using um, manual or, or craft-based processes and so forth? Supply chain management, should we make or buy a component? Who should we sell, um, purchase from, etc.? And inventory, how much inventory of each item should we have? When should we order? and in what quantity should we actually order. Um, scheduling has to do with, um, uh, again, as we see in terms of workers, what jobs should we perform, uh, how many workers should we have um, on active duty at any one point in time. So for example, if you look at a teller at a bank, uh, or the tellers, you will notice that the capacity increases and decreases or the schedule to so schedule the staff to match the capacity to demand. So you may find four tellers one time, another time you find only two, sometimes six. Like on a Friday uh, in certain locations where a lot of people do some banking on the week, just before the weekend, then um, and, and if it's during lunchtime that you have the peak period, you'll tend to find more servers at that time. And then maintenance, how do we build reliability? And then who's responsible? 
how often do we maintain so all of those things are important so where are the jobs in operations management and you could see a whole lot of them there they're everywhere cost reduction quality customer service improving response times strategic patients facilities technology productivity improvements so these are things that we could contribute from an OM standpoint all right I'm going to take a break at this point and come back with part two of this chapter